Welcome, everyone, to NBA Action here on 2K Sports. It's Tuesday Hoops, and it's next. It's the Miami Heat facing off against the Denver Nuggets. And let's send things courtside to Kevin Harlan, who's in the Mile High City, ready to call the game. Get ready, everyone, for Tuesday afternoon NBA action on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harley here with Steve Curry, Clark Kellogg. Doris Burke will join us moments from now from Courtside. And now a quick check of our starting lineups for both teams. First for the Heat. And then for the Denver Nuggets. And while it wasn't the biggest win streak of the season, the Nuggets did have a pretty good rampage of their own from the end of February into March. And because it happened when the Heat were doing what they were doing, the Nuggets kind of flew under the radar. It'll be the Heat off the tip. Outside Lowry. He feeds it along. Back to Lowry. Good ball movement here by Miami. And out of bounds as the Nuggets gain possession. I tell you what, that's just a major unforced error right there, guys. My goodness. Miami on defense. Here's Murray. Caldwell Pope kicks to Gordon. That's good. Gordon's got the opening basket of the game for the Nuggets. The entire defense was frozen foot. Nobody picked up the shooter, Kevin. Number 14, defended by Caldwell Pope. That's good. He's got one of those shooting strokes that never changes, guys. I mean, even if a defender's you know, all over him, he just never seems to flinch. A great quality to have as a shooter. Very true, Steve. I mean, he's also one of those guys who doesn't take long at all to get on a roll offensively. He's a fun player to watch when he gets high. And I think Doris Burke has something for us right now. Doris? Kevin, thank you. I caught up with Eric Spolstra. One of the most important things he wants his team to do defensively in this game is to maintain pressure on them on the perimeter and not allow them to get into any rhythm or flow in their long-range shooting game. We'll see how disruptive they are, Kevin. Doris, thank you. Obviously, Clark, the three ball is a big concern for any defense. Well, yeah, it is, Kevin, but the upside is you're not getting broken down in the lane and you're not giving them free throws, but you still have to challenge those shots. Great job of utilizing that screen and finding space to knock down the jumper. Good basketball. Lowry dishes to Butler. Back to Lowry. Puts up a three. And that one's good. Lowry's got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. Now you can't leave him alone, especially from long range. Now about two minutes gone here in the first quarter. Now Murray, the pass to Caldwell Pope. Well, I love it. He gets there first, absorbs the contact. Nice play defensively. No flop there. He took that one right in the chest. Miami's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. Now here is Lowry. Butler kicks to Lowry. From downtown. No luck. The Nuggets have gone two or three here to start out the game. Murray the pass to Caldwell Pope. Number one. Miami grabs the miss. Outside Lowry. Here is the jump shot. 
Lowry's got five. The Nuggets trail by three. Here's Murray. Number one. Fires the jumper from the corner and nails it. First quarter of play, we're about three minutes in. Butler with the ball. Outside Lowry. He passes to Love. And the shot counts. He's fouled, and it's a chance for a three-point play. That's really the area where they'd like all of their shots to come from. Well, as you said, the Nuggets put together their big 15-game winning streak. But, you know, Steve, since it happened, when the Heat rattled off their big push, nobody really even seemed to notice. <laughs> That's right. It might have worked out in their favor anyway, Kevin, because, you know, that win streak really kind of put them into high gear and allowed them to climb into the third spot in the West. Probably it was nice not having the media focused on them and, and wanting to talk to them every day about what was happening in the Western Conference. Gordon outside, and that one's good. Gordon's got his second basket of the night. Well, that was a rugged screen set there, fellas, and the defense didn't even try to go through that one. Love with the screen for Butler. Picked his pocket, and pushing it up, here's Denver. And he takes that one up and powers it through. And once he took off, it looked like the defense just had no interest in getting in his way. That's one where you just give up the two points and move on. Miami trailing. Number 14, defended by Caldwell Pope. Pass to Lowry. Off the pick. No good. Well, as far as jump shots go, that's as high percentage as it gets. I'm not sure how that didn't go down. Here's Caldwell Pope. No good. And Miami the other way now. And here is Butler. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. And that one's good. Nuggets have gone 5 of 8 from the field, shooting over 62%. A lot of people thought the East would be a cakewalk for Miami last year, but Indiana made sure that wasn't going to be the case. What a series with the Pacers using their size and strength to pound Miami down low. And eventually, the Heat were able to pull it out, but boy, was that a tough series. And Miami calls their first time out of the game. And just to touch back on the Eastern Conference Finals, went to a Game 7 where Miami ran away with the game. But, you know, Clark, if it weren't for the heroics of Ron earlier in the series, it could have been the Pacers that took on San Antonio in the Finals. You know, I was thinking a little bit about two former ABA teams meeting in the NBA Finals, but the Heat managed to steal Game 1, and I thought that proved to be the difference in the end. That was a game the Pacers had and didn't squeeze. But the way these two teams are constructed, they should be seeing a lot more of each other in the near future. And I think that's great for the league because whenever they meet up in the regular season or the playoffs, it's always been a battle the last couple of years. Nice rivalry developing I between those two. I think you're right. Yeah. A good one brewing there. Mm. And here are the Heat now after the Nuggets pick up two. Lowry gets a screen from Locke. And Lowry gets it to go. Lowry's got eight. Wow, this has been a thriller. I mean, the, the way these teams are battling, just going back and forth. Would you like to bet that this game may end on a buzzer beater? How much would you bet? <laughs> <laughs> and here are the Nuggets now, following Carl Lowry's three. Second foul of the first quarter. They're probably going to have to sit him down here to try to avoid number three. And the Heat going with the whole new group on the floor. The Heat with the lead. Here's Vincent. The feather touch on the finger roll. Beautiful. You know, something we're seeing less and less of these days, that little finger roll. Now Jackson. 
the train. And again, Denver with the triple. Both teams on fire right from the opening tip. Pedal to the throttle, Steve, just like we like it. And Miami has possession. Here's Vincent. Left side, Martin. Passes it to Vincent. Heat moving the ball around. Number 31. Shot is off. And the Nuggets going the other way. Green left side. Good. Green's got his first points of the night. Six changes of the lead here. Yeah, no team able to build a big lead early on. I mean, it's tight. What do you think, Steve? Well, both teams still kind of feeling each other out here. And uh, neither team has been able to, to find an edge in this game. You know, Heat head coach Eric Spolster worked his way up from the very bottom in that organization. I mean, he got his start as a video coordinator and through years of hard work and dedication has really become an outstanding coach. Here's Jackson. After the main shot from Vincent, offensive rebound, and he hits it and gets hacked on the play. A three-point possibility if he can convert the free throw. And his specialty is tracking down those great offensive rebounds that oftentimes he can put right back up for an easy deuce. Steve, he is always on the prop. I mean, you got to body him up early or he'll stake out that prime real estate for those second shot opportunities. And back to Coach Eric Spolstra. As a guy who got his start as a video coordinator, picking the game apart, Steve, he's very comfortable with the new advanced stat movement, analytics in he the is. NBA. Yeah, and I've had a chance to speak with him quite a bit. He says that the way they use advanced stats is just a, as a conversation piece in the coaching room. Uh, their, their analytics department will bring them various information, and it will force them to ask questions, which is very healthy uh, for a coaching staff to do. Now here's Jackson. One thirty-seven left here in the first quarter. Back to Green. Shoots the three. Denver the rebound. Pass to Jackson. Outside, Green. That doesn't go either for Green. Amy's gone three or five from three-point land so far in the ballgame. Number 31. And another basket for Miami. 106 left to play here in the first. Denver calls timeout. And at this point of the game, always important to stay focused. And while the coach goes over the game plan, these players are getting a much-needed chance to rehydrate and refuel with Gatorade. And guys, uh, we know the drill well, all three of us drinking the game of each two. Yeah, yeah right. Right. I mean, Kevin, people oh, have no right. idea the fatigue that can set in during a telecast. And so it's important for us <laughs> to stay hydrated all game long. Clark, you're always hydrated. Yeah, I try to be, but it's usually um, with a combination of H2O and Gatorade. I love Gatorade. Look at Steve. He has the Gatorade shirt on. Yeah, he's, uh, he's really immersed in the Gatorade. Yeah, gotta love it. <laughs> On offense, here are the Heat. Back to Martin. The pass to Vincent. Dishes it to Zeller. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. The Heat marched their way to the best record in the league last season, 66 and 16. And the ability to win on the road, a big part of that league best record. And back to the Heat and their play on the road. 29 wins for them as the visiting side. And that was in another category compared to every other team in the league. Steve, nobody else really even came close. No, nobody did. And I'll tell you what, when they went on their huge winning streak, it wasn't like they did it all at home. In fact, 13 of those 27 games during their winning streak uh, were on the road. And uh, that's not easy to do. And so Zeller nails both of them. You know, the high-octane offense and the up-tempo brand of basketball the Nuggets played really was quite effective in being able to kind of dominate Eastern Conference teams. Now, here is Smith. Jackson dishes to Smith. Six to shoot. 
number one. And again, it's Denver. That's a nice job of getting the ball in the paint and burying the shot. That's exactly how it's done. Here's Vincent. Robinson a screen on Smith. Number 24 loses the defender with the screen and drills the jumper. And the Heat lead by three. From deep. No good trying to beat the buzzer. Well, it's been a high-scoring competitive game through the first quarter of play. Heat lead by three. And we'll be back shortly for the start of the second quarter. And the second quarter getting underway. No team gaining an edge so far. All right, we'll take a look now at how the points have been generated so far. A scoring breakdown for Miami. Now, they didn't waste any time getting into a groove out there. They're dialed in from long range. The other thing they've had going for them tonight is their passing. I mean, doing a nice job. Plenty of their points early on coming off assists. The Nuggets trail by three. Smith kicks to Jackson. Back to Smith. Shoots from 12. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. Miami leading by three. Let's go to our sideline reporter, Doris Burt. Doris, what do you have? Guys, as you know, the Miami Heat try to keep the plays they run as simple as they can and rely on their talent and teamwork to win them games. But playing like that can present its own kind of problems. Coach Foster said, quote, the challenge is not getting bored with simplicity. Simple is what works, though, as evidenced by their back-to-back -back titles, guys. Well, Doris, sometimes it makes sense to keep it simple. Thanks. Here's Jackson. After the made shot from Zeller. Good play just over a minute of basketball here in the second quarter. Smith with it, now guarded by Vincent. Six on the shot clock. Number one. No good from outside. Got the defender off his feet with the bump fake, but couldn't knock it down. Miami's gone three of five from beyond the arc so far tonight. Oladipo off the pick from Zeller. Oladipo with the ball. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. Boy, nice bucket. They are really playing intelligently here. And even though the lead's not large, they've definitely got the upper hand. Clark, they've been looking out of sync offensively. You know what? A basket here would do a lot for their confidence. A good one from Smith. Seller grabs the board. Miami leading by seven. Oladipo, the pass to Vincent. There's the pick. Shot clock at six. The Heat need to get a shot off. From deep three-point range, Oladipo misses. Not sure about that one, guys. That was really deep, especially for him. He's not a great shooter from out there. Not sure what he was thinking about there. He got an advantage there off the pick and took it right in. They're forcing the ball inside, and it's working beautifully. Yeah, the defense has been futile here. Five of the last six field goals in the lane. Now, here's Odie. Pass to Vincent. Heat moving the ball around. And you can count it. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it three. Took advantage of some shoddy defense there. They've got to at least get a finger on it. I'll tell you what I love about him. His ability to finish even while absorbing contact. He is so strong. Even with defenders hanging all over him, he continues to finish at the basket. And you know, he is an extremely skilled player attacking off the dribble, too. I mean, he's got a great pull-up jumper as well, Steve.
Well, I tell you what, the Nuggets turned that Pepsi Center into their own personal fortress last season. Had the best record at home in the league. Nobody could run with them when the game was played at the Pepsi Center. Here's Murray looking for his first basket still in this one. Taps it up. Great positioning on the putback. Well, I'm impressed with the determination he showed right there. Getting himself in a good position under the glass. Did his work early there. Yeah, with the presence on, know just where the rebound was going to go to. Mm -hmm. And then the nifty touch to tip it in. That was beautiful. In that home record of the Nuggets, you mentioned Clark, 38-3. and three. Been a long time since someone has been able to put up a home record like that, Steve. Pretty impressive. Well, it's always been difficult for teams to go to Denver and play at high altitude. And then you factor in all the back-to-backs and the fact that the airport is a long way uh, from Denver. They're in a different time zone than a lot of teams in the West. So throw all that stuff together, and it, it's tough to, to roll in there, arrive 3 or 4 in the morning, and try to win the next night. Denver really taking advantage of, of their geographical area. So it's Denver now. Following the basket by Kevin Love. And it's out of bounds to the Nuggets as Denver returns possession. The Heat making a switch here. Here's Murray. And that one's on target from the wing. Excellent communication on the inbound play there, guys. He got him in a good position, and the pass was as it needed to be on time and on target. Well, he leading by six. And here is Butler. Outside Lowry. Lock at six. Number 13. And another basket for Miami. He is just so good from that range, guys. You know, never mind with the height advantage he had there. Nuggets have gone three of seven shooting the ball here in the second quarter. Number 15, and it's blocked. And they're pushing it up. Butler dishes Delauer, and it's sent by Murray. The Nuggets trail by eight. Number one, defended by Butler. Gordon outside, and that one's good. Gordon's got eight. You might not think of him as a laser three-point shooter, but that shot was there for him, and he had to take it. Now a timeout called by Miami. Well, what a series it was in the finals a year ago. Uh, such great basketball. Two teams that like to play up-tempo. And I'll, I'll tell you, the Spurs had Miami. They had the series in the bag. They were one play away from wrapping it up in Game 6, but the miracle comeback uh, from the Heat that led to the Game 7 victory and another title for the Miami Heat. The well, Heat leading by five. Clark, that was interesting because the games themselves weren't particularly close uh, through the first half of the series, but things started to get really tight when they left San Antonio after game five. How about that, Kevin? You talk about things tightening up. Mm. We had a game for the ages in game six. 28.6 <laughs> seconds to go. The Spurs plus five. Miami needed a miracle, and they found it in the form of timely three-point shooting and got some help from the San Antonio Spurs missing some free throws. The game six was about as intense an NBA game as you'll ever see. Oh, it was off the chart. Absolutely fantastic. And Butler, here we go. Can't cash in from close range. The Nuggets trail by five. Outside Gordon. Lots of room. And he hits the jumper for two. Gordon's got 10 points. Miami with the ball. Now Butler. No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. Here's Love. Smooth as silk on the finger roll. Denver calls timeout. 
The Heat have magnificent talent, but even coming off an NBA title, they had never put their name into the conversation of the great team until last spring when they went on that amazing 27-game winning streak. Nuggets have gone 5 of 11 from the field since the beginning of the second quarter. And for the Heat, they were staring right at the 72 Lakers win record, and I'm sure everyone remembers, but ultimately they would fall speed to the Bulls after 27 consecutive wins. Yeah, that streak to me was one of the great feats in NBA history. Winning 27 games in a row in the regular season, so difficult, but it showed you what the Heat were made of. They really uh, were battling every night, and I thought that put them on a great run heading into the playoffs. The Nuggets have shot just one free throw earlier, one for one in the game. Whenever you play Denver, you know it's going to be an up and down game. They love the Nuggets, love to push the tempo and make the game a track meet. And a lot of times they were better at it than their opponents because they're an excellent fast-breaking team. Some game time on that rim puts a little whip free on that angel food cake there. <laughs> it's a tight ball game, and those displays of strength, Clark can get one team rolling. Agree. Oh, boy. Whipped cream, cherry on top. It's, it always comes back to dessert. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> and he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. The Nuggets scored a ton of points last season, and, and among the several categories, Steve, that they led the way in was fast break points. You could see it with their bigs. Well, I like the way they constructed their roster, Kevin, because everybody from the guards to the centers could all run and get out in the open floor. So it was like an avalanche when Denver would, would come at you, particularly on their home floor, with not just three guys running, but all five. And so Lowry nails both of them. Shooting 100% in the quarter. They've um, they've made them all, taking full advantage at the line. Well, it's a nice job of really making the most of their opportunities. And Denver has possession. Trailing by two. And yes, sir, that one drops. He has seven. Guys, he's got the limp to get to the rim. And when he gets there, you never see a clumsy or awkward finish out of him. Everything is smooth and fluid. Now here's Butler. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. Denver grabs the miss. They've been strong on the board. There's no disputing that. That's what the box score says. Still anybody's game, though. And stolen by Kyle Lowry. It's good from about 19 feet. Lowry's got 12 points in the game. Denver's on one of two on three-pointers here in the second quarter so far. Here's Murray, now recovering. Murray's good. Well, the number one priority for a defense uh, when you face this guy is to keep him getting anywhere from the basket because he's just so strong as a finisher. And the consistency of his jump shot is another thing we should say about him. I mean, it doesn't matter how many defenders are flying at him, his stroke is never changing. Here's Butler after the made shot for Murray. The drive by Lowry. Four on the clock. From outside the arc, and that one's good. 15 points in the game. He's picking up right where he left off in the first quarter. The Nuggets trail by three. Passes it to Caldwell Pope. And again, it's Denver. There's 39 seconds left in the first half of basketball. Outside Lowry. He dishes it to Butler. 
Off target with his three. Denver's gone three of seven tonight from three-point territory. Sixteen seconds left to play here in the half. No good from Caldwell Pope. Now Lowry. Fifteen points in the game. One second left. That's good on the jump shot. And the Heat lead by three. And a tight game here as we end the first half. Heat out front, up by three. We've got more in store for you right after this. Now, presented by Sprint. Thanks for joining us at halftime. We got a terrific game going on at Pepsi Center. Miami up on top against Denver. They've gotten a tremendous boost from their reserves. Going to them early in the game for production. Kyle Lowry scoring with ease against the defense of the Nuggets. He's been so hard to guard. You give him room on the perimeter, he'll pop the three. You get up on him, he'll blow by you for the rim. And for the Nuggets, it's been all hustle. They haven't settled on tough shots. They're taking it strong inside. They're getting quality shots and a lot of quantity of those quality shots. Reggie Jackson making an impact. You can't complain about the way he stepped up. That will be all for us. Thanks for stopping in. We'll see you next time. The Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. Welcome back, everyone. The second half about to get underway, and it's been a close one so far. You know, Lowry is playing well. 15 points, and he's got nine points from behind the arc. Yeah, that's been an important part of his game today. He's made his open look. Here's Caldwell Pope. Now the pass to Murray. Number one. With nobody on him, he carries the jumper. He's got ten. Now here is Lowry. Number 13. That one off the back iron and out. And the defense did a pretty good job of closing off the middle once he got inside the lane. Pass to Murray. For the lead. Again, the Nuggets score. And quite a great competitive game so far. Yeah, tip for tat. I mean, back and forth, plenty of lead changes, an excellent play. These two teams, guys, look so evenly matched to me. I think this could go right down to the wire. Here's Butler. After the main shot for Murray. Nice pick there to create the shot, but it's no good. Number one. Buries it down there. And now a three-point Denver lead. They've been good on all three of their shots since coming out of the locker room at the break. Outside Lowry. Love with the screen for Lowry. Oh, and there's the alley-oop. Up high to stuff the alley-oop. Incredible timing on the alley-oop. He absolutely hammered it down. <laughs> and that's the play we're going to remember when this game is all said and done. Here's Gordon. Following the score by Miami. He passes to Caldwell Pope. And stolen by Lark. Number 13. And it's going to be a goaltending call here, so they'll count the bucket. He thought he had that one clean, but the ref saw it differently. They'll count the basket. The fans don't like that call one bit. Well, the officials got an earful as a result. Outside Gordon. Pass to Caldwell Pope. And it's out of bounds. The Heat will take it the other way. Into the third we go. Two minutes in now. He kicks to Lowry. Six on the shot clock. Number 14. And misses it off the right side of the rim. While not as dominant on defense as they were a year before, the Heat still were tough at that end of the court. The thing is, you could see them 
turn it on and turn it off when they needed to defensively, so they always managed to get the key stop when they needed it. And it's still perfect here in the second half. Four for four from the field. A touch over two and a half minutes of basketball played here in the third quarter. Here's Lowry. He's got 15. The feed now to Love. Shot from the wing. The shot is off. And it's Denver the other way. And when you're coming off a title like the Heat are, there is you know, a natural tendency to cruise. But, you know, Clark, you said this, and Steve, I'm sure you want to comment on it. Uh, they can turn it up in a hurry. Well, it's just so much athleticism on this team that if they want to press you in the half court, they usually can force turnovers. And if not, they can also sit back and play a more straight-up defensive style and be very effective that way as well. Miami with the ball. Outside Gordon. From eight. It counts. And the foul. That one on one. Well, he earned that one, took the hit, and still found a way to knock it down. Yeah, fantastic body control. And the will to get it done, you like that focus. Free throw good, Gordon. The Heat trail by five. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time getting the lid off the basket so far. Martin for three. Bryant with the rebound. Kind of rare to see him come up empty on a wide open look. Tries it for 19. And it's Miami with the rebound. Robinson's got his third rebound on the night. Here's Vincent. He has six. Heat moving the ball around. Shot clock at six. And stolen by Gordon. And now here comes Gordon leading the break. Number one. Off target from three-point range. The Heat trail by five. It's stolen by Green. Excellent D that time from Robinson. Miami's gotten fewer than half of their three-pointers to go down tonight. They're four for nine. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul, shot misses. He'll be shooting two. Very close to a three-point play right there. Yeah, that didn't go down, but those are exactly the plays coaches like to see. The Heat shooting their seventh and eighth free-throw attempts for the game right here. Well, and they were 74% free-throw shooting as a team last year, so... Those numbers could come up. And those aren't the kind of numbers they can afford to repeat throughout this season. Denver making a switch here. And so Zeller nails both of them. The Nuggets leading by three. Feeds it to Jackson. The dish to Green. Green left side. Six to shoot. And with the rebound, number 22. It's good, and he drew contact on the shot, so he will go to the line. A three-point play chance here. And what's your take, guys, on the hustle sticks for the Nuggets? Well, it's been an outstanding game for them in the open court. Their fast break points really stand out. And I love their hustle because they're getting a lot of second chance opportunities just as a result of playing hard. One thing that stood out with the Nuggets guys is how they rebounded the ball. They had a number of guys that could just attack that glass. And when you have guys that are hungry and resilient and relentless, you get a lot of rebound. Here's Vincent. Hits the three-point five. He's got nine. 
No matter who it is, that kind of defense is not going to cut it. Jackson with it. Five points in the game. Number one, guarded by Robinson. Back to Jackson. And he sinks the shot coming off a strong pick. Jackson's got seven points. Well, guys, back to the Nuggets. They are decent or, or just run of the mill when it comes to defensive rebounding. But what makes them such a handful, Steve, to deal with on the glass is their offensive rebound. Number one in the league last season. It's kind of the uh, approach for George Carl. Run at all costs and attack the glass, both uh, on the boards and in transition. And I think that's one of the reasons they developed the identity that they did as a team. They, they were a nightmare to deal with. They just came at you in waves. A different look for Denver. DeAndre Jordan comes in for Bryant. And it's Caldwell Pope in for Jeff Green. Robinson kicks to Zeller. Here's the teardrop. And the layup is good. Zeller's got four points in the quarter. You know, the teardrop sometimes is one of those, oh no, oh no, oh yeah, shots. Kicks it to Jackson. The finger roll finish at the bucket. Jackson's got nine. Just another outstanding play down low. These teams couldn't be farther apart in their effectiveness in the paint today. Yeah, that's right. It's been all good at one end, and we'll try to be diplomatic here and just say not so good at the other. And it's Martin missing. Boy, have they been hitting the glass hard or what? Kind of surprising in such a tight game. Yeah, you're right. Very rarely will you out-rebound an opponent like that and not have it pay off. Now here's Jackson. He's got nine. Lock at six. Here's Caldwell Pope, defended by Vincent. That's good. One fifty-three left in the third. There's the screen. There's the three. Gets it to go. Eight points for him. You know, the defense didn't exactly try to fight around that screen, and that's why it turned into the easy basket. Outside Jackson. Number one. That's good, and it's Jackson with the assist that time. How about that for a response? They will say they can give the three as well as they can take the three. Vincent, the pass to Martin. One and I and left in the third. He feeds it to Robinson. Five on the clock. Vincent fires for three. And the shot is good. The Nuggets leading by four. Shot off the pick. Short. Seems like they're on their heels every time defensively because the ball continues to go into the post. Well, if they don't pick up the aggression, things are only going to get worse. Here's Vincent. He's got nine. The shot by Martin. Drops one in from the wing. Martin's got his first two points. You're going to be waiting a long time if you're waiting for him to miss that when he's that open. It's nine seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. And here's Jackson. He's got nine. Dishes to Jordan. And it's Denver scoring again. Good job there, Kevin. Getting himself a little space on the inside. Here's Vincent. They trail by six. Robinson a screen on Jackson. That's a two for Martin. And another basket for Miami. Solid screen right there that freed him up for the jump shot. 
with one on the clock. And no good trying to get that one. And as we end the third quarter, a great game. Both teams playing well. Nuggets lead by four. And we're coming right back. Be sure to stay with us as we get started for the fourth quarter. All right, we welcome you back to what's been a hard-fought battle. Fourth quarter should be good. The Heat trail by four. Number 31, defended by Caldwell Pope. Five to shoot. Number 24, and that one swishes right in. You start hitting a few of those mid-range shots, and it can open up your whole game. The Nuggets shooting 61%, showing all the indications of an offense that is locked in. Ryan with a screen for Smith. Smooth as silk on the finger roll. And the Nuggets lead by four. Boy, it's been a poor defensive effort. When that ball has gone inside into the post, they've been in trouble. Yep, points in the paint clearly going against them now. And so here is Miami. Shot's good. Boy, the deeper we get into this game, the more offense we're seeing. And that goes for both teams, Steve. Everybody firing on all cylinders right now. Now, here is Smith. Smith off a pick from Bryant. Smith dishes to Gordon. From 13, and it's Miami with the rebound. Final quarter of play, about a minute and a half off the clock into it. Bryant with the rebound. Boy, they almost tied it up with that shot. Boy, they're this close here in the fourth quarter. Scrapping back into it. And he kills it after taking the nice feet on the run. Now, this is why the breakaway rim was invented. For plays just like that. Well, he almost brought the whole thing down, Clark, by hanging on that long. <laughs> yeah, he did, well, didn't he? It was a great dunk and also a great game we've got here. And Miami has possession. The Nuggets getting the bucket. Here's Oladipo. And it's good. Bob through contact. It's the shot. He'll go to the free throw line. You know, Kevin, he outweighs his man by quite a bit in that matchup. And he did the right thing by going straight to the rim. Don't mess around with him. But he's making a switch here. Love's checked in. And we're around two minutes into the fourth quarter here. Now Jackson. Outside, Green. Back to Jackson. Passes to Gordon. From the arc. That's good. And it's Jackson with the assist that time. Jackson's got his third assist on the night. Here's Lowry. Just under two and a half minutes gone here in the final quarter. A picture perfect screenplay and the jumper's good. What an excellent performance from the field for him. The Nuggets have gone three or four in field goal attempts since getting things started here in the fourth. Back to Green. The baseline J. Misses off the left iron. He can't get anything to drop. And the way he's going, I'm not sure it's something he should try to shoot his way out of. No, that might only serve to make things worse, Steve. Sometimes the harder you try, the worse it gets. The pass to Caldwell Pope. Count it! And he'll have a chance for a three-point play. It's going to be on Victor Oladipo. That's some grit and determination in the post. Essential qualities to have late in a close game. Exactly. And this is the time to attack on the interior and, and generate those easy opportunities. And Miami making a change here. The Heat trail by five. He dishes it to Lowry. A 
pass to Oladipo. Shot clock at six. Gets it to go. Absolutely on fire from beyond the arc. Yeah, that's where he's getting his points. Well, if you're just tuning in, welcome. We've got about three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. Number 15. And right on target. Good. Offensively, he can be the engine that drives them at any given time. Love with the screen for Lowry. Can't get it to go. And it's Denver the other way. Jackson gets the call well played. It's blocked. The Heat trail by four. Lowry passes to Oladipo. Love. Some nice ball movement here by the Heat. Oladipo misses. Nuggets have gone five of eight shooting as we've come down the home stretch in this final quarter. Number 15. It's good. The assist this time from Jackson. Jackson's got his fourth assist in this one. Beautiful feed off the bounce to his teammate there. Nicely done. And here are the Heat now. Number 31. Started by Green. Lowry inside the line. Will not go. This is off the front iron. I think the lead they built here, guys, is in large part due to what they've done on the boards. Absolutely. I mean, they have a plus 10 advantage in rebounds, and they've been in total control of the backboard. Use that pick to get in close. And it's an eight-point nugget lead. Ran his man straight into that screen to open the lane up for the hoop. Miami's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. And the Heat call time here. Yeah, he's seen enough of this interior scoring that his defense is giving up. So the message during this timeout is to lock things up inside. You know, sometimes a group can just get spaced out on defense. They're not connected and playing five is one. And usually a timeout can help you refocus and recalibrate that defense. And let's get this update now from Doris Burke, who's across the way on the sideline. Guys, over that last break, I listened to Eric Spolstra address his team. He doesn't think they've been giving it their all, saying they've been quicker to rebounds to every loose ball. we got to wake up. The game's slipping away, and we're letting it happen. We have got to take control of this thing. We'll see if he lit a fire under him, guys. All right, Doris, thanks. Number 13. And the layup's good off the glass. You know, he's knocking down his shots today, but it hasn't really translated to the scoreboard yet. Now here's Gordon. Got a piece of it. Butler with the ball. But put that. It's good on the putback. He is pouring it on in the second half, guys. I mean, a much better showing than he had before the break. Here's Caldwell Pope. Six on the shot clock. Three-pointer. Another three for Denver. The defenders need to talk to each other. The communication lacking there on that three-pointer. And here's Lowry. He passes to Love. From deep. The rebound by Caldwell Pope. Caldwell Pope's got his third rebound tonight. You know, they built their lead here by doing all the little things well. And one of those things has been rebounding, Clark, because they have really come out and taken control of the board. Shooting for Denver. Number two. Two shots.
and the first one drops. The Nuggets making a switch here. Murray's checked in. So he gets them both. Well done again. He doesn't have the same problems at the line that plagues some of the NBA's other big men. Outside Lowry. Number 31, defended by Caldwell Pope. Fires from deep. Gets the bucket. His three-point shot is so pure. Just training one after another. A minute 50 left in the fourth quarter. The Nuggets leading by six. Pass to Murray. Here's Caldwell Pope. And they were the no time and getting those three points back. Caldwell Pope's got six here in this quarter. Timeout called the Heat. They're behind by nine. There's a minute 34 left in the fourth quarter. Outside Lowry. Good ball movement here by the Heat. Here's Love. Battles through traffic and lays it in. Here's Murray. Guy has a good chance for them to slow it down. Yeah, I agree. Got to use some clock here. There's 117 left in the game. Pass to Caldwell Pope. Six to shoot. That drops. And the Nuggets lead by nine. This is a fantastic performance in this half. He didn't play as well in the first, but you know, you just know with this guy, he's always ready to turn it around. Denver leading by six. Now Murray. Fifty-two seconds left to play in the final quarter. Shoots up a three. Another three for Denver. Played an important role in their offense today, guys. Without him, they may not be in the lead. 46 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Lowry kicks the button. That falls. Nice feed that time from Kyle Lowry. Forty seconds left in the fourth quarter. And so they choose to intentionally foul. First free throw missing for him. We'll see if he can nail the second. And he can't make the second free throw either. Missing both. Miami's gone 4-6 from beyond the arc in the fourth quarter so far. Here's Butler. Come on. Big time finish. Emphatic. 
He hangs on the rim, too, just for, for good measure. Hey, there's nothing wrong with a little showboating out there. And now we're going to try to get foul intentionally. them up by far. Second one is good. And both at the line. It's a six-point ball game. Well done at the free throw line. I'll tell you what, that will make things a lot easier on them if they can continue to convert. And the Heat call time here. They're losing by six. 27 seconds left in the fourth. Here's Butler. There's the whistle, called a clear pass foul there, yep. And he'll shoot two at the line. He drops the first one and that makes it a seven point lead. Free throws here. So now it's an eight point game. And an intentional foul right there. Yeah, with the game out of reach, intentional fouls don't mean anything. It's just an exercise in futility. Let the clock go. I agree with you, Clark. It just doesn't really compute at this point. Come on, you can hit me! And that hurts as he doesn't get the first one to fall. Trying to focus now on the second. So he comes up empty at the line. Miami's gone 4-6 from beyond the arc in the fourth quarter so far. Vincent the pass to Oladipo. Martin for three. Offensive rebound. And Zeller kicks to Martin. Takes the three. No good. So the Nuggets win. That was a solid win, Clark. Yeah, it was. And I think it came down to will more than steal. They went out and got this one. And now for Clark Kellogg, Steve Furr, and Doris Burke, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for joining us tonight in our presentation of NBA on 2K Sports. Now our Jordan player of the game.